Hello everybody, my name is Antti. Hi. Nice to meet you. <laughs> so, uh, I have a confession to make. Uh, I'm this nerdy, little bit of a geeky guy and I'm an engineer. So, I went out uh, to buy myself a set of Philips Hue smart lights. And uh, the next morning, when I wake up, uh, I roll over to the side of my bed uh, and uh, tell to my voice assistant, that's an iPhone, that, hey S, uh, good morning. And the voice assistant there replies to me that, good morning, auntie. And then she knows to turn on the lights, the wake up lights in my home and turn on the coffee brewer as well. And at the time I, that I wake up from snoozing, uh, there will be a wonderful scent of coffee in the air. Uh, that's, that's amazing. I was blown away immediately. And since I am this a little bit of a nerdy, geeky guy, I immediately felt like I was the Tony Stark and this was my Jarvis. Y you know, Tony Stark is the Iron Man in the Marvel movies. So, so I fell in love with my product. Uh, and here comes the confession. Then I wake up on the third morning and roll over to, uh, to the side of my bed and say, Hey Jarvis, uh, good morning and nothing happens. Hey Jarvis, good morning, I shout out, and still nothing happens. I storm out of my bed, slam on the coffee brewer and turn on the lights myself, and then I find myself holding the cell phone. And is there anybody from Philips in the audience at the moment? <laughs> Thank God. Um, <laughs> I find myself writing a one-star review on the Philips Hue smart lights, and that wasn't my proudest moment. But then I get a cup of coffee and I calm down. And uh, I start to think, the engineer in me starts to think about it. And uh, uh, human beings nowadays, they, they walk around uh, with internet at their fingertips. And uh, basically what it means is that the modern state of the internet exposes the truth of who you and your business are. It exposes the truth of your products and services. And no amount of marketing or advertising money can cover up the pain of a bad product. So, what can we do about this? <laughs> if you are a leader, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a professional uh, who wants to play the long game, succeed long term, I think there is only one thing to do, and that is to actually create excellent products. Oh, how basic can you be, seminar boy? <laughs> Create excellent products, the kinds of which that make the praise rain on you. And uh, <laughs> what it means is that it would be experience that would consistently and reliably deliver on what you promise. And that's quality to me. Of course, that would mean that every morning the lights would wake me up accordingly. And today I can rightly say that they do. It's a five-star experience for me. This is not the product placement for Philips or anything else. But anyways, I talk about quality for a reason. I've been working as the CEO for a software testing company for uh, well over a decade now. And during the time, I've had the privilege uh, to meet with over 2,200 people in one-to-one -one discussions about how to create more value and do it reliably and consistently. And uh, during my journeys, I've noticed <laughs> or I've discovered that there is one it's almost painfully simple idea that seems to separate the successes from the failures. And that's the idea that I would love to share with you guys now. So uh, I'm going to be talking about quality assurance. It's the work that would produce the quality, produce that excellence. And uh, in quality assurance, to me, there is one really important goal, and it is to find the problems, the errors, the bottlenecks, or someone might call them bugs, uh, early enough so that our organization may be able to fix them before they have an impact on the business, be before they have an impact on the revenue. And uh, I will be calling the problems and the errors and the bugs, I will be calling them blueberries for some reason in the next story. <laughs> so, uh, how many of you guys have been to a forest at some point of your life? Raise your hand. 
Oh, that's cool, great. Then you must know that people tend to go to a forest for a reason. Uh, my reason is, of course, blueberry smoothies. I love them in the winter. And every August I jump into my car and drive outside of Oulu uh, to get my harvest of berries for the winter. And uh, I drive to a beautiful forest patch there, and if I was uh, to approach this challenge of mine of getting a bucket full of berries, if I was to approach that challenge like a traditional quality assurance thinker, here is what I would do. I would jump out of the car, uh, take out the map, and start to plot out the trail, have a great plan. I would plan it out and, and go east towards that big boulder and then head north to the beautiful lake and there is a campsite where you can brew some coffee and we're really, we're really satisfied with the work. And then would, I would start to execute on my plan. I would take the bucket, harvest the berries on the route to the boulder and up north to the lake. I would be really satisfied with the bucket full of berries. But then I go back home and deal with the berries and come back to the site to get some more. What happens when I take out my awesome, awesome <laughs> map, that plan, and start to execute on it again? East to the boulder, north to the lake. What happens to my bucket of berries? Is there more or less? Less, of course. That's the deal. And on the, ne on the third time when I go there, <laughs> I end up with a bucket full of frustration. <laughs> Instead, I have nothing. And this is an activity that I call checking. This is an activity number one of quality assurance. An activity that I call checking. So to anybody who's been picking berries in the forest at some point of their life, they know what to do to actually get more berries, don't you? Yeah, now's a good time to nod a little bit. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Uh, I drive to the forest and jump out of my car. Then I deploy all of my experience as the forest goer and the berry picker. And, and I explore the forest to get the bucket full of berries every time when I go there. And that's a creative kind of work. And that creative work is something that I call hunting. And the painfully simple idea, it can be digested into one simple sentence. So are you ready for it? Yes, yes great! Quality assurance is the sum total of two different activities, and they are checking and hunting. So. What's the differentiating factor between the successes and the failures then, you might ask? Well, I've noticed <laughs> that uh, the failures, for some reason, they tend to invest all of their time and effort into the checking kind of activity, to the checking bucket. And it's only natural because human beings are gravitating towards the sense of certainty, uh, to, to feel in control, and the checking work feels in control. It's planned, it's easy to execute, it's easy to measure, and have great KPIs and stuff like that. So it feels in control, and in the end you have a certainty that there were no new problems, errors, bugs or berries in the bucket. On the other hand, the great successes, what they do, they have a tendency, they somehow instinctively understand that quality assurance is a twofold activity, to some total of two different activities, checking and hunting. And they tend to overinvest into the hunting bucket. It's a creative work to explore the forest with your experience. And it's really hard to measure that kind of work, it's really hard to industrially manage it. And the difference between the two, the failures and the successes, seems to be simply this. The failures seem to be certainty-driven, while the successes seem to be curiosity-driven. To quickly sum it up, number one, okay, number one. <laughs> the modern state of the internet exposes the truth of you and your business. And no amount of marketing or advertising money can cover up the pain of a bad product. Number two, to deal with this kind of a situation, I think there is only one option, to create excellent products. The kinds of which will make a rain of praise on you. And that number three, that excellence emerges after an understanding 
that work called quality assurance is a twofold activity. Quality emerges as an outcome of both checking and hunting. So I have one question for you guys. Uh, how, uh, do, do you have like an unlimited amount of time and money at your disposal? Who here has? Is there any Tony Stark in the audience? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Me neither. Uh, who has a limited amount of time and money at your disposal? Yeah, me too. Only one minute and 30 seconds left. So, <laughs> exactly. If we know that we have a limited amount of resources at our disposal, at our hands, where would it be wise to invest it? Would it be wise to invest it into the checking bucket to gain more certainty? Or how much more value could you and your team be creating if you were only out hunting? So thank you, guys. <laughs>